Hey guys, today we're going to uh, learn how to solve uh, for a variable in literal equations. Solving for a variable in literal equations. So first let's understand what a literal equation is. Basically a literal equation is an equation with two or more variables in it. So it's something like if I said um, x plus y equals z. That would be considered a literal equation. Two or more variables. Uh, something that you, I know you guys are familiar with are things called formulas. And a formula is a type of literal equation, um, but it's a type that states, of a, uh, states a rule or a relationship among quantities. And you guys are pretty familiar with uh, stuff like that. Uh, for example, uh, area of a triangle. That's a literal equation. It's a formula that basically says to, to find the area, it's one half base times the height. So you need to know the base and the height to figure out the area. Um, another formula that you're going to need to be very familiar with is called the distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. Rate is also considered speed, so if you give me how fast you're going, you tell me how long you're going at that speed, and I'll tell you the distance that you traveled over that time. Um, temperature conversion, you guys may have run uh, across this in science, where basically um, if you want to know if, I'm sorry, if you give me the temperature in Fahrenheit, um, I can just do a couple of little operations here and then convert that to its uh, corresponding temperature in Celsius degrees. There's also uh, another basic one, the perimeter of a rectangle. That is the perimeter equals twice the length plus twice the width. So some basic uh, formulas that you may, may be uh, familiar with. Um, these are all examples of literal equations. But now we want to learn how to solve for a particular variable that might be uh, somewhere tucked away in one of these formulas. And to do that, we need to use inverse operations. And before we get too deep into it, I'm going to use something that um, you already know how to do. A very basic equation that just has one variable. Now when we say solve for x, we want to get x alone. So we want to do whatever I have to do to get x alone on one side of the equation. And I see that 5 is being added to x, so we will undo something. But the point is we get x alone on one side, and then usually we would just get some number over here that says x is that number. Well, that's the same thing we want to do with literal equations. We handle it using inverse operations. So for example here, if I want to say solve for b, I want to get b alone on one side of the equation. Well, let's go back to our um, our regular equation, think about what I do to get x alone. Well, I want to get rid of this 5, so I subtract 5 from this side. But if I subtract it from this side, I have to also do it to this side. Now, 5 minus 5, this of course is 0. This x comes along for the ride. And then on this side, we have 12 minus 5. I can go ahead and subtract 5 from 12 because they're both constants. So of course I get x equals 7. We come over here to the literal equation, and I want to get b alone. I have to get rid of this a. So of course, just like over here, I would subtract a from this side. But if I subtract a from this side, I have to do it to this side. Okay, a minus a is 0. This just comes along for a ride. But now, what do we have on this side? I can't add these two or subtract these two because they're not like terms. So 3 minus a is just three minus a. Okay. It works uh, the same with another operation or in other operations like three times x equals 17. We all know how to, get, how to get x alone here, but how about in this? a times b equals five. Well on this side of course what we would do is divide by the coefficient. And if we divide this side by three, we divide this side by three. Three over three is just one and we get x is now alone and it is uh, equals 17 over 3. Well, that's exactly what we do here. I want to get b alone, so it's we're saying a times b to get um, rid of this a, I divide it by a. But if I divide this side by a, I divide this side by a. a over a is 1, I get b alone, and on the right side I just have 5 over a. So let's try a couple problems. Okay. Uh, we're going to be doing eight problems, uh, so please format your paper into box eight. And try this first one here, where it asks you to solve for r. 
Okay, to solve for r, I'm gonna highlight this r right here. And when I highlight this, um, it just lets me know that I wanna get rid of this t, because I'm saying r times t. How do I get rid of this t? I divide by t. If I divide this side by t, I divide this side by t. t over t is one. I now have r alone on this side. r equals d over t. Easy peasy. Let's try another one. Okay, go ahead and give this one a shot. Okay, notice I want to solve for y. So I'm going to come over here to y and I'm going to highlight it for you just so that you can tell what I'm uh, trying to get along. Now here, uh, my y, I'm multiplying y by 2 and then adding x to it. So I have to undo this carefully. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Notice what I did, I subtracted x from both sides. 9 minus x, that those are not like terms, and I can't do anything other than put 9 minus x. But now I have 2 times y. How do I get y alone? I'm going to divide by 2. And I divide this side by 2. This whole side by 2 is what I'm doing. I have to divide this whole side by 2. Notice that this groups it, that fraction bar groups it, saying I'm dividing this whole thing by 2. Now 2 over 2, of course, is 1. I get y alone. And on this side, it's 9 minus x all over 2. And that's our solution. Okay, let's try another one. Notice this says solve for k. I want to get k alone. Give it a shot. Okay, now this one, be careful with this one. I want to get k alone here. But notice that k is in the denominator. Being alone means k has to be in the numerator. So something else is going to be over here, but k has to be in the numerator. There's one k, and it's in the numerator. So i got to somehow figure out how to get him into the numerator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides. I'm going to multiply this side by k and this side by k. What that does is that eliminates the k from the uh, denominator, and I get m alone. But on this side, I'm going to have x times k. Another way of thinking of this, I'm going to back up a little bit. It's like clearing the fraction. When we say we got to get rid of that denominator, we multiply by k. Well, the k's cancel, leaving just an m. But then when I go here, it's k times x, or kx. Even one more way of looking at it is thinking that that's a proportion. And I can handle proportion using cross products. So on this side, it's 1 times m is m. k times x is kx. And I can do it that way. Notice all three of those techniques gets k in the numerator. So I'm going to go back to this basic one here. Multiply this side by k and this side by k. That gets the k in the numerator. But I still need to get k alone. Wow. First part of our meeting in the college room. We're going to be beginning our collaboration council. And all students are welcome to attend during this session. Thank you. Okay. Now I want to get k alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by x. And when I do that, x over x is 1. I get k equals m over x. And that's my solution. That's k is now in the numerator. It's got a coefficient of 1, and it's over 1. So that's what it means to solve for k. Uh, number 4. Ooh, a little bit more challenging here. I want you to solve for f. Get f alone. Give it a shot. Okay, here, now look at what we're doing here. We're saying f plus 4, and that whole thing is being divided by h. And that equals 6. Well, if it's this whole thing is being divided by h, I'm going to multiply everything by h. I'm clearing the fraction is what I'm doing. So when I multiply this, the h is canceled. And then when I come over here, it's going to be h times 6, or 6h. Now that I've done that, to get f alone is fairly simple. I just subtract 4 from both sides. Notice I can't combine those. 6h minus 4, that's a variable term, and that's a constant term. f is now alone. It's f equals 6h minus 4. That's what it means to solve for a variable. All right, I have four problems I'd like you to do on your own. Um, I'll be checking these tomorrow in class. Uh, notice that it's solve for B. 
on this one it's solve for W, solve for Y, and solve for F in each one of these um, literal equations. Good luck and we'll see you tomorrow.